Hey everyone, so this video is regarding away rotations and applying for them. So you do away rotations, maybe no away rotations, up to three or four rotations at a different institution during your fourth year of medical school in the specialty that you're interested in. You can do them at institutions that you possibly want to go to for residency. You can do them at places that you think are very well regarded and you can get a strong letter of recommendation from, or just places that you want to just check out. So you can do those. It's not mandatory for every specialty. I think for emergency medicine, you have to. You have to get these letter of recommendations from different institutions. For other um, specialties, it's highly recommended. For some specialties, it's like, up to you and you really don't have to. So depending on your specialty choice, you may or may not have to do this. For me, figuring out like the process of it was a little bit difficult. So I just wanna give some pointers that I learned throughout the way and hopefully they'll help some of you guys. So the first thing you wanna do is figure out if you even need to do away rotations and which potential institutions you'd be interested in doing. And also figuring out your fourth year schedule um, you have to keep in mind that ERAS is going to open September 15th and then um, MSPE letters are going to be downloaded October 1st. So you have to keep in mind if you're looking for letters of recommendations from these places, the timing of your away rotations. Um, another important thing in timing is getting your immunizations done. So for me, I basically got them done the winter break of my M3 year. I got my measles, mumps, rubella titers, varicella titers, I think TB titers. I'm not sure if it was TB titers, but I got the quantifier and blood test done just to make sure that I had everything in order because you have to fill out this standardized form that basically includes all of your titers and all of it. You can probably download it now if you wanted. Um, but just get that done with. Make sure you have all your immunization records done. If you need chest x-rays, if you need whatever, just make sure you have it done. And I would just recommend doing it over winter break because you don't want to have to wait for lab results and you also don't want to have to deal with this stuff when you're in class or during your rotations. So I just got that done during winter break. I think I missed like a couple. Maybe I think one of mine I ended up getting just, it was immune rather than um, actually like the actual titer number. And that's what you will really want to be careful about is get the titer numbers. Do not just get if you're immune or not, make sure you get that titer number. Um, so that's the one thing you really want to get ahead on and just get that done with. You can also consider working on your personal statement. You're going to have to do that for um, when you apply for interviews and some away rotations actually do want a personal statement, either why you want to go into that specialty or why you wanna to go to that institution. And you might not know the institution, but you can probably just finesse that once you figure out which place you wanna to go to. But you might as well just figure out like what specialty you wanna go into and like type out a personal statement. Um, that might be easier said than done. I know people who have switched later and figured out they didn't wanna do that specialty, but it's still something you can do during winter break. So you wanna get that done with and um, there's that N95 fit mask test thing that you do that I've never actually used in the hospital, but you just get it done. Some schools want that, so if your um, hospital's ever offering that for free, just get that fit test over with. Um, other things is that some schools require a criminal background check, some require it before acceptance, some require it after, so just check with your school what kind of criminal background check they did. If you can see what the school that you're hoping to apply to wanted in the past just try and get that stuff done beforehand i'm not sure if you guys can see it like we couldn't see it this year because it was a different system and they had just switched systems so i wasn't able to see what the schools had wanted in the past and i think they changed things too because i talked to people who are in the class above me who would apply to those institutions and um it seemed to be a little different so you would just wanna figure that out if you can. If not, just try and get the basic stuff done. Most people will want a copy of your, some people wanted the step scores. I think like, actually maybe all of the schools wanted step scores. So just have a copy of that. Um, have your, your school will provide your transcript, that's okay. My school provided the um, image that I was sent to people. You have to provide an image of who you are. Um, 
and the immunizations. So that's like basically bare bone stuff. Step one, scores may or may not be needed, but you wanna just get that stuff done. Um, so then you have this application time and you, they tell you that it opens like late January, or early February, and then a lot of the schools don't even open at that time. And you're like, dang, what was the point of this? But it's nice to just get everything done and out of the way because if your school happens to open that day, then you're ready to go. Cause some of these places are first come first serve and then other places it's just based off of your um, application. They don't look at your, um, when you applied, it's just based off of you. So you wanna just get things done. Like, you know, we're neurotic med students, just get things done as quick as you can and submit on the first day if you can. But it's not the end of the world if you don't. But I would just try and get things done. Um, but yeah, for me, like places didn't open up till March. It took a while for places to open up. I still have some aways that haven't even opened their application. So I don't know if I can even apply to them because that's pretty late and that's quite unfortunate. But what can you do? So you also, I don't, and I honestly don't know how to figure this out because it depends on the specialty in the schools. There are some aways that are very competitive and you might not get them, but you also don't want to decline in a way once you're, if you're accepted to one. So there's this, I don't know how to figure it out, to be honest. And if I ever figure out how to correctly do that, I'll let you know. But the problem is, is like a lot of these aways, they don't tell you if you're accepted or not all at the same time. So you might have to accept in a way and then decline it. And that can look bad to some places. They'll be like, oh, this person declined me for a ways. Like that means we shouldn't give them an interview. I really hope that not many places are like that, but that is somehow still could be like a mentality that some schools have. This process is just really hard because timing wise, um, you know, you, you have to like accept in a way because you want to make sure you get the aways done, but at the same time, what if the institution that you think might be a little more helpful offers you an away later? Um, that could happen too. It's just, it can be difficult. Some people get really lucky in the ways, their top three ways, let them know first, and then some people, it's just different. And I've seen it go both ways, and I mean, it. I really don't know how to tell, how to figure that out, but I would just, you know, make a good spreadsheet of, okay, this is when these aways are going to open. This is when they say they're going to start letting us know, but um, some places can take up to a month after they said they were going to let you know. So you have to keep that in mind that not everything's set in stone. Um, another tip that I learned is that some people actually call the place that they're trying to do the away, and that can actually help them because you're showing interest in the school and you're showing that I care enough about this school to actually call and just see like, hey, can I get an away here? And people have gotten away just through doing that. And that can open doors for you that you might have not gotten otherwise. So if you, there are some schools where I saw the um, VSAS application, I was like, I'm not calling these people. Number one, because they didn't even give a phone number. Number two, because they seemed very strict, but I mean, they're a very good school. So I was like, why not go for it? But I didn't call. But there are other schools that might be a little more receptive to calling. So I would recommend doing that if you really, really want to go there. But you also don't want to be too over pestering. So there's this balance that you have to figure out. I would also recommend talking to any upperclassman who might have you know, been interested in the specialty that you're going into, did an away at the place you want to go to, and just see what they thought of the institution, what they thought of the away process, if they think that it's good for you to call and just double check on aways. Um, yeah, so I think that that's all good. Um, that's all I really got, to be honest. I would just try and get everything done as quick as you can. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I know this process kind of blows. I don't know how helpful I can be. I don't know how much of this stuff is like specialty specific, but I will definitely try and do my best. Okay, thanks for listening.